Today, President Donald Trump announced the nomination of Amy Coney Barrett to the United States Supreme Court to fill the seat left open by the death of Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Now, I know that this is a politically hot topic, so today I'm going to talk about a few interesting things about Amy Coney Barrett, and I keep saying Amy Barrett Coney, <laughs> But I'm getting it right right now. That's a good thing. Uh, a few things that are interesting about her and her nomination that I believe are is non-political. So put the left and right, take the left and right hat off for a second, and let's find some interesting things about this nominee. Thank you, everybody, for joining. I'm Joe Palmetto, Joe the Lawyer, a practicing attorney in Pittsburgh, PA. I do criminal defense, personal injury, family law, and I have a YouTube channel. Thank you for tuning in. If you like my content, please like, subscribe, comment, or share. It's a free way to support the show, and it helps Helps me get higher rankings and more viewers. Okay, so Amy Coney Barrett. The first thing that I heard about her that I found was interesting, non-political, non-political, I hope, I think, but was interesting, is uh, she used my cousin Vinny to teach the law of evidence at the University of Notre Dame Law School. So she had been a professor at the law school for somewhere, I think, between 10 and 15 years. Now, I obviously went to law school. I was taught the law of evidence. Law of evidence determines what sort of evidence can be presented in the courtroom and how you can do that. Obviously, certain things can't be used in a courtroom. For instance, most people know what hearsay is, right? It's the words of some party who's not there in the courtroom testifying. That can't come in, okay? You need that person to come in into the courtroom and say it. Well, evidence is a complicated area of law. I particularly enjoy it, but it's complicated and it's extremely difficult to learn. I think it's probably one of the top five hardest subjects in law school. Well, apparently when Amy... Coney Barrett was a law professor at Notre Dame. She taught evidence using clips from my cousin Vinny. <laughs> okay, and listen, I'm not to, my cousin Vinny. When he cross examines in that movie, he does a great job. His cross examinations are the best. But when he gets up there and he says a certain point, you know, the, the prosecutor goes, makes an opening statement, and all Vinny does, he gets up there and he, he goes, Everything that guy just said is BS. Though he didn't say it as nicely, it is freaking hilarious. I love that movie. I actually think you can learn a lot from that movie as an attorney. But I think it's cool that she used my cousin Vinny to teach the law of evidence because it's a way to uh, bring the attention of the students to the subject, right? And otherwise fairly boring, dry, and complicated subject. Well, if you watch My Cousin Vinny, now they probably watch that movie and, and all those rules of evidence pop into their head. They're learning the law. So I thought that was neat. She likely has um, a pretty good sense of humor if she's teaching law school like that because some law professors are very, very stuffy and proper. So I really enjoyed hearing that about her. Number two, now this, is, this has been in the media a lot and maybe has become political. All right, fair enough. Um, but her and her husband have seven children and two adopted children. I, I think that's kind of cool because for the most part, you see with these Supreme Court justices and in, at least in modern times, they have one, they have maybe two kids. I think a family with a lot of children, a justice like that, maybe that will bring a, a little bit of a different perspective um, to uh, her decisions while sitting on the bench. So I actually think that's a neat thing that she has a large family and in a way it sets her apart from other justices and may also um, influence her, her decisions, hopefully in a good way. But number three reason, and this is the best reason in my opinion, is she is a graduate of the University of Notre Dame Law School. Now I believe she finished first in her class well, why is that significant? I'll tell you why. Because every darn justice that goes on the Supreme Court went to an Ivy League school. The Ivy League schools dominate the Supreme Court, and frankly, I'm sick of it. Just like 
I, I think somebody who comes from a different university brings a different perspective and perhaps a different attitude, right? Am I right? Okay, yeah, of course, if you went to Harvard and Yale, I'm not taking anything away from those people. Listen, if I'd got into Harvard or Yale, I would have went. It's a, it's, it's a, a, you know, it's a ticket to success and riches and fame. I mean, if you get the opportunity, you do it. However, I don't like the stranglehold that the Ivy League schools have had on the Supreme Court and probably the federal judiciary overall. But regardless, um, you look at all the justices currently on the Supreme Court, they all went to Ivy League law schools. Shoot, you look at our presidents, all right? Even Donald Trump went to the University of Penn, which is an Ivy League school. Obama, Harvard, Clinton, Yale, Bush, Yale. I mean, you got to go back pretty far to find a president who didn't go to an Ivy League school. It's ridiculous, okay? And I think, you know, coming from a, a middle class education and uh, middle, class, middle class upbringing, I like seeing someone who came from a different school. I believe they bring a different perspective to the bench, all right? Um, different per look, different outlook on life than someone, frankly, when you go to an Ivy League school, you're sort of crowned, okay? You know, that's it's like you're crowned by, by society. As long as you have that Harvard, that Yale, that Cornell by your name, right? You are crowned by society. So I really enjoy seeing somebody outside of that elite, outside of that group going on the Supreme Court, bringing a different perspective. I would say this if this was a Democrat or a Republican, a liberal or a conservative, I think it's cool. And I'm not saying that we should, uh, you know, look, they dominate. The Ivy Leagues dominate the upper reaches of our government in so many ways. And that's one of the reasons that Henry Truman, uh, Harry Truman is my, see, I, I'm, I'm, I bounce these names around in my head. Harry S. Truman is one of my favorite presidents. Do you know why? He didn't even go to college. All right. We may never see that again. But Harry Truman, thumbs up, man. He made some of the greatest decisions, the most the most impactful decisions in history. Never even went to college. So those are three reasons to uh, three interesting facts about Amy Coney Barrett. All right, three reasons to even if you don't like her politics, to perhaps you know. Uh, feel good about her being going on to the bench. <laughs> that may be impossible for some people, fine. But, um, you know, she used my cousin Vinny to teach the law of evidence. She's got seven kids and she went to Notre Dame, a non-Ivy League school. I don't care that it's Notre Dame. I actually root against Notre Dame in football pretty hard because I'm a pit guy when it comes to college football. But um, I love, I love that we have a Supreme Court justice who did not go to an Ivy League school. So, Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Joe, the lawyer, Joe Palmetto. If you like my content, please like, subscribe, comment, and share. Thank you.